The Australopithecus, Presentation and Characteristics of Their Time The word Australopithecus comes from the Latin Australis, which means from the south, and from the Greek Pithikos which means monkey. It is an extinct genus of hominid primates that inhabited Africa in a period ranging from 3.9 million years to 2 million years ago, whose main common characteristic is that they moved bipedally. To have the concepts clear and not to get lost with the terms, we will say that the word primates comes from Latin, primas which means first and refers specifically to an order of placental mammals to which humans and their closest relatives belong, while the word hominids also from Latin hominidae refers to a family of primates that include four genera and eight living species, among which are humans, orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas and bonobos. The climatic conditions in which the Australopithecus lived are situated in the context of the Zanclians period from the Lower Pliocene to the Gelasians period from the Lower Pleistocene. The Zanclian or Zanclian or Zanclian is the lower age and floor of the Pliocene epoch and series and extends from 5.3 million years to 3.6 million years, which is characterized by the so-called Zanclian flood or deluge. This is a theorized flood that could have filled the Mediterranean basin, this flood reconnected the Mediterranean Sea with the Atlantic Ocean. Sea level rise in the Mediterranean may have reached velocities in excess of 10 meters per day, based on erosional features preserved to this day beneath the Pliocene sediment. The Zanclidean flood created the Strait of Gibraltar, which prevented animals from crossing between Africa and Europe. Rising sea levels caused the Nile River to become a ria as far as Aswan, 900 kilometers from the modern Mediterranean coast. An estuary is an incursion of the sea into the coast at the mouth of a river due to the subsidence of part of the coastline. It also caused the isolation of many Mediterranean islands such as the island of Crete. However, the formation of the Strait of Gibraltar prevented animals from crossing between Africa and Europe during this period. On the other hand, the Gelasian or Gelasian period begins 2.5 million years ago and ends 1816 years ago. The Pleistocene climate was a succession of glacial cycles, which means that there were periods of glaciations, followed by others in which temperatures increased, known as interglacial periods. This continued throughout the Pleistocene until the last glaciation, known as the one ended. Much of the planet was covered with ice, approximately 30% of the planet was permanently covered with ice during this epoch. The Pleistocene was a geological epoch that, for some specialists, should be known as the Ice Age. For others, this denomination is erroneous, since in the Pleistocene a series of glaciations followed one another, between which there were periods in which the environmental temperatures rose, known as interglacials. As far as fauna is concerned, the Pleistocene epoch saw the success of large mammals such as the mammoth, mastodons, and the megatherium, which practically dominated the landscapes of the planet, their main characteristic being their large size, which is why they are known as megafauna. During the Pleistocene epoch there was not much activity from the geological point of view. The continents were practically already in the positions they occupy today. Even areas that today are submerged under the sea were on the surface, forming bridges between continents. Let us remember that there were interglacial periods. As far as flora is concerned, life during this time was quite diverse, despite the climatic limitations that were observed with the glaciations. During the Pleistocene on the planet there were several types of biomes, restricted to certain areas, so that the plants that developed were those specific to each biome. It is important to note that many of these plant species have survived present day. A biome is the set of ecosystems characteristic of a biogeographic zone that is defined on the basis of its vegetation and the animal species that predominate. During the Pleistocene the human species began to develop into modern Hello, I am Australopithecus anamensis, my name comes from the Turkana word anam which means lake, because I was found in Kanapoi very close to Lake Turkana in Kenya. It is important to point out that I was catalogued as a new species that was named Australopithecus, Australis which means from the south, and Pithikos, which means monkey. 
Thus, the word Australopithecus corresponds to a genus of hominid primates comprising seven species, Afarensis, Africanus, Anamensis, Barel Ghazali, Diaremida, Garhai, and Setaba. The most remarkable thing about us Australopithecus is that we moved in a bipedal manner, and although we still retained the ability to climb through vegetation we could now stand without difficulty on two feet, alternating walking with moving through the trees. All of us lived in Africa for more than 3.9 million years and until about 2 million years ago, when our extinction is estimated to have occurred. I am between 4.2 million and 3.9 million years old. About the story of how I was found, I will tell you that in 1965 a single arm bone of an early human was discovered at the Kanapoi site in northern Kenya. But without additional human fossils, it was not possible to identify the species to which it belonged. Later in 1994, numerous teeth and bone fragments were found again at the same site, with experts determining that the fossils were those of a very early hominin and that I belonged to a new species they named Australopithecus anamensis. Later in 2019 the finding of a complete skull was announced. In terms of my physical and biological characteristics, I had a combination of traits found in both apes and humans. My brain size was similar to that of present-day great apes, reaching an average capacity of 500 cubic centimeters. My jaws were characterized by being quite strong and at the same time somewhat narrow and my teeth were hard and had enamel. My appearance was quite similar to that of today's chimpanzees. It is estimated that we were about the height of a chimpanzee, between 1.2 and 1.5 meters and weighed between 40 and 50 kilograms. Females were much smaller than males and lived in the tropical areas of Africa, feeding on seeds, fruits and leaves. As for my diet, I could eat both typical open space foods, seeds, reeds and grasses and fruits and tubers. I used stone tools with which I was able to tear and even fracture bones to take advantage of the marrow and to defend myself or ward off animals that might threaten me. My species was a scavenger and we threw stones as tools to scare away predators and take advantage of the remains of their prey. Because we did not know how to handle fire, we ate the meat raw. Paleontological reconstructions of the sites at Kanapoi suggest that I lived in open wooded spaces and also in areas teeming with plant life typical of lakeside areas. My bipedal ability coupled with my climbing skills allowed me to move over land in the African savanna and also to take refuge in trees and tall vegetation. At first it was believed that only the genus Homo was the one that had produced the first tools and utensils, however, more recent findings dating from the time when we Australopithecus existed suggest that our species already used certain types of tools with which we cut the skin and bone from hunting. This gives Australopithecus the ability to produce cutting objects, albeit quite archaic. Hello I am Australopithecus afarensis. My name comes from the Latin Austral monkey of afar, which was the place where I was found. I am between 3.9 and 3 million years old. My species was discovered on December 24, 1974 in the Awash River Valley in Ethiopia. The specimen found was a female, and was named Lucy after the Beatles song Lucy. Twelve other fossils of individuals of my species were also found in the excavated site, the study of which led to a better understanding of the origin of human beings. This led to the discovery that the ability to walk upright appeared before the brain grew. I was a biped although according to recent research it is assumed that I lived more on trees than on the ground. The contours of the footprints preserved in the hardened ash clearly showed that the hominid that left those impressions walked efficiently bipedal, like a human. As for my physical characteristics, I was of slender build, and my skull was more chimpanzee-like than human, between 380 and 450 cubic centimeters. My estimated weight was between 45 and 28 kilograms, and my height between 1.20 and 1.50 centimeters. This large variation depended on the gender of the individuals. In the case of Australopithecus afarensis, gender dimorphism is very pronounced, both in size and weight. My teeth had several peculiarities that have helped scientists to discover my type of diet. Thus, my incisors were those typical of a mainly frugivorous diet, with a considerable size, as were my molars and premolars, although my canines were small. 
My palate had a strong resemblance to that of present-day humans, with a curve completely different from that of the great apes. Another important aspect of my morphology was the shape of my pelvis. The study of this part of the body is what has allowed us to affirm that we could walk upright on both legs. Many scientists claim that the shape of the pelvis and legs made my gait different from that of present-day humans, which implies that my gait was more inclined than that of present-day humans. Proportionally, my legs were shorter than those of Homo sapiens, preventing me from moving efficiently and quickly. I lived in Africa, specifically in the area now occupied by Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Kenya. In these three countries the remains of the more than 300 individuals known to date have been found. My environment was dry and not too dense forest areas. More modern data suggest that I was also able to move to savanna areas, searching for riverbanks and lakes. I was herbivorous and fed primarily on fruits with a high sugar content, as well as leaf buds, and also ate roots, tubers, nuts or seeds, occasionally eating the remains of other animals, as my species was not a hunter. My way of life was marked by my double capacity for movement, for while I could walk on my two legs, I also had a great ability to climb trees and stay in them. The most widespread theory is that we lived in small groups in which there was mutual collaboration for survival. To sleep, we climbed trees, in which we built a kind of nest. We could also spend the night in shallow caves. Like the rest of the bipeds, we were quite gregarious, establishing collaborative relationships to increase our chances of survival. On the other hand, as is the case with modern apes, groups were structured around a dominant male who exercised supremacy over several females. As for children, it is believed that Australopithecus afarensis had a faster physical development than humans, becoming independent at an early age. My species used sharp stones to extract the meat from bones and to obtain the marrow from them. We did not master fire and we did not build places to inhabit. As for the use of tools used, I had the ability to produce cutting objects, although quite archaic. Hello I am Australopithecus africanus, and my name means Southern African Monkey. Some sources estimate that I am less than 3 million years old, and up to more than 2 million years old, and others that I am between 3.3 and 2.5 million years old. I lived between two geological periods, the Upper Pliocene, and the Lower Pleistocene. I was discovered in excavations in South Africa and within 80 years the remains of more than 200 individuals of my species have been found. My species has traditionally been considered the immediate ancestor of the Homo group, specifically Homo habilis. However, some researchers consider Australopithecus afarensis to be the common ancestor of Africanus and the Homo species. The latter hypothesis has become more popular in recent years. Like other Australopithecus, I had a bipedal stance. My average weight was 41 kilograms for males and 30 kilograms for females, with a height of 1.50 meters. My cranial capacity was 480 cubic centimeters to 520 cubic centimeters, well below the 1500 cubic centimeters of today's human being. My face is shorter than that of the preceding Australopithecus, and also the size of my teeth, in general, was smaller so my canines and incisors did not protrude, my teeth do not differ much from the dentures of present humans. I have all the lower limb adaptations of a normal biped, but I also have the characteristics of a climbing hominid, with upward-facing shoulder joints, long arms compared to my legs, and long curved fingers. My hands are more human-like than those of Australopithecus afarensis, specifically because of my thumbs, which provided me with greater grip and prehensile strength. I lived in fairly open spaces and dry climates. Research has shown that I probably inhabited the same spaces as Australopithecus afarensis, because my species came to replace them due to our greater hunting skills. The specific geographic space where I lived is located in East Africa, encompassing the current territories of Tanzania, Kenya and Ethiopia. My facial and molar robustness suggests that my diet was more plant-based than earlier hominids. My climbing adaptations, inherited from my ancestors, allowed me to use trees for shelter, as well as to sleep and feed quietly. 
While on the ground my species is thought to have been a forager, and we fed on plants and small animals as well as carrion. Some researchers suggest that we used caves for shelter. In nature, foragers have relatively large brains. Bipedalism may have been a response to an increasingly resource-poor habitat, and encephalization a response to the need to locate and learn how to process new foods. Since Australopithecus africanus, researchers have found a trend toward expansion of the portions of the brain involved in association and complex thinking, as well as the strength and manual dexterity required to manipulate food and objects. In the Sterkfontein and Makapanskat caves, very primitive stone tools were found alongside the remains of Australopithecus africanus. Although there is no evidence that we made tools, it appears that we used stones for hammering and cutting.